I don't know what I'm doing here this hour. Because I'm retired. If you say But I am a retired minister of God. And there are two things that a minister should not do. A minister, you shouldn't tell a lie. Speak it as it is. Number two. A minister keep on preaching until you are dying. So long as there's breath in me. Say I will keep on preaching. And so if you see me here. Because there's breath in me. If you say I'm here today and then on this special day when you are celebrating home and family life together. We will examine to see whether the homes of the Southwest members are revived. And Abraham who said, it is as well as in fear, Muno. It is in Kenya, and whether the homes of the life Southwest Church reformation is taking place. It is a sign, I buy in a bush, and when you fear today, I'm going to preach together with my wife, and I'm in a marriage, and I can't have some kind of because it has to do with marriage because a our demon sim because we've been married for some time now. Go, you are a check a cra. I thought we should preach together. Amen. Amen. Do you want us to preach together? Okay. Then let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we have come this morning. We have come so that you remind us of our spiritual needs. We have come this morning to commune with you. We have come this morning because, Lord, we want to go to heaven. We're going to heaven with our wives. We're going to heaven with our husbands. We're going to heaven with our children. Lord, we want to go to heaven. Help us. Help us to reach this goal. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The topic is Spirit-filled Family. I don't know how you understand it. Listen. Some time ago, I saw in a newspaper. And maybe And they talked about a prominent family from, the, from the Hollywood. From Hollywood. Ah, a war baby, a movie Hollywood. When you talk about Hollywood in America, see, I can Hollywood as a war America man. In fact, I went there to solicit funds. Me ko ho se kamera ko people iska kakra. And when I got there, the man me drew hono. I said, what? I said, eh, na dieni. Every place, every house, mansion, everything. Bibi o bibi a dampon akasi yankwa. Because it's a place for rich people. Because the whole is for at Sabia. So when I saw the news in the paper, it's all about famous couple from Hollywood. See, many people think the Everything in Hollywood is rosy. And Happiness over there. Because they have money. If you say Omu Usika. And so people thought this particular people have beaten the marriage odds and they have stayed together. So Omu say, oh, Omu, you go for it here. 
or more our dear more chinian, you know, or more your mate to make the soon kunima or more your mate now bumache. That nothing could separate them. Be pierced with the two among them. But unfortunately, then so Uncle Siaga, the news in the paper says that. As when I woke up, I'm going to say this couple from the rich section of America, the Hollywood, they were getting divorced. Now, as somebody near me said, "Sir, we are for you. I'm going to Hollywood. I hear it's comfortable. I'm going to Tomono. I'm going to Adi. No, I'm going their 11 year old marriage um, was, was getting, getting over. Na egu. In fact, their combined financial um, asset, you may call it, na ye ka about 250 million dollars. America's can of a pay. You, you talk about their assets. But that 250 million dollars could not save them. It it could not save their marriage. It couldn't save their family. Rich family. Rich couple. They couldn't even think about that. They have two beautiful children. And there are two beautiful children could not save their marriage. Couldn't save their marriage. What on earth? Can keep their marriage together. Today I want to speak to you plainly. Because if you say, and pardon me to say, my sermon says my there are many people say, in the church of God. They are very active in the church. They give money in the church. They do everything to make people know how active they are in the But because of their marriage, they will not go to heaven. Is it too strong? Do you know that because, maybe because of your marriage, and how you conduct yourself in and your family, you will not go to heaven. You go, you come to church regularly, very active. But unfortunately, there are certain things and conditions in your family yeah, that, well, yeah, that will not make you to get to go to yeah, of late i have been studying a topic and that topic is spirituality because i am asking myself what can take me to heaven the only thing that can take me, you and I, to heaven is our spirituality. Let people see that you are spiritual. That the Holy Spirit is conducting you about. And that people will see that this brother, this sister, is a spirit filled person. No, be who say, Oh, you are bay, no, you are bay, home, home, ash, or ma. There's a gentleman, we will not take anything to heaven. Or say, Yeah, for she, and course, we will leave everything on this earth. You bet, Jay, be ours as we will labor and labor and labor and labor. You bet, I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray. But the only thing we take into heaven is our deeper question with our course, true. It's our spirituality. And you are home, home, this morning, you are. I didn't come early. 
I was coming to hijack your Sabbath school. And to let you know what you are studying at all. About sanctuary. That God is dwelling among us. Did you understand the lesson? Make me a church. Let me dwell among you. Is God here? Is God dwelling among us? Is God dwelling in your family? Is God dwelling in your heart? Wife? Where are the wives? Wives? Is God dwelling in your heart? Because he said, your bodies are the temple. So say, no, the only temple. Your bodies are the churches of what? Of God. Your body, my body, and that the Holy Spirit dwells within our heart. That is the seat of the Holy Spirit. Because God is dwelling in the tabernacle. From time to time, God visits. In fact, every Sabbath, every Sabbath, God visits the church. Amen. Amen. You don't understand. You ask me, I'll give you that text. If you know it, it is in Revelation. Every Sabbath, the Spirit of God visits the church and inspects everybody. He inspects everybody to see how the church is. Therefore, that same Spirit visits everybody. There's good news for you. See, when the Spirit of God visits the church, in that the presence of God is felt in the church, you will feel the presence of God within your heart. And you will feel that I have really come to church. Now, I sorry, I'm You will come to church, and you come to church, and you come to church. Now, sorry, and you come to church, sorry, and you come to church. Now, sorry, and you don't feel the impact of the Holy Spirit in your heart. You will feel happy spirit. Amen. Amen. Because the Spirit comes in to inspect your heart. And to help you to be revived from time to time. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. So if money, 250 million, and there are two beautiful children, and all that they have, and they have the the world, could not save it. Their marriage. I mean, it couldn't save their marriage. Let me put it another way. It couldn't keep their marriage together. Nobody could do it. Then you ask Pastor Saki. Now Saki say, What is it that can keep their marriage together? That's what we are saying this morning and, and and afternoon and 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 every, next Sabbath when we shall close with the topic success in marriage. There is success there. Otherwise the Holy Spirit will not come to church. And that Jesus Christ will not come to make in what? Inspection. But he has something good for you today. And I want to give you that thing today. Spirit filled life. What does that mean? It means that family is a Christ centered family. Because uh, we read that when God invented, if you like, the family, he intended that 
to oh, be, yes, sir. it should remain intact. And can after Always. And I bring you now. Oh, by the way, one for winter. Do you know that we are not going to marry in heaven? You know it? So if you are not married, you better get at it now. It is an And enjoy a little bit about the marriage life here. Are you understanding me? You understand it? Get married. You get it. God intended the marriage to be a very happy, happy home. If I want to read you a text that it should be intact. Put it down. It's Malachi chapter 2, verse 14 to 16. Malachi, Malachi 2, 14 to 16. And Matthew chapter 19, 4 to 6. Malachi 2 14 to 16. Malachi. I read. Yet ye say, Wherefore? Because the Lord has been witnesses between thee and your wife of your youth, and against whom thou hast dealt treacherously, and the wife. Of your covenant. What does the tree say? Wait here, let me ask him. Malachi, it's him here, which I'm going to do in the doings here. Now, Monka said, if he dance so, if he said, a rade a year, one day will run to bring more year in ten dance a folk. Or no, na, what cra no, in Kuntumpu, then so, or ne, wo, wakafo, ne, wapam, ye a year no. If you deal treacherously with your partner, know that God knows it. Because God says he brought you together with a covenant. Let's go to verse 16. For the Lord, the God of Israel says that he hateth Putting away. What the meaning of that? He hates what? Putting away. It, it means God says he hates divorce. When you do this, you say, "Na me tem me me time I will go." Everybody is trying to cope on us here. Na ne oti musuo kata natale sono asafu rade na us here. Enti mo nusha mo hu iye. God hates divorce. They, this tells you that God, in, God intends that marriage should go on always. Let me, let me read you another text. This is from Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 1, verse 4. This is from Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 1946. I read. Me, me kind. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Have you not read that we, who, we who made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother? And shall cleave unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Wherefore, they are no more two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. If he in Fiasiano, an obo nipa, or Bema, any oba, an o year own, nor can say, a yin tina, o nipa, pecha neja, nena, not in a home, a copata, and a year home. No umper no no aye or crow or honam crow, eighty or naso and yet benubu, nemum or your honam crow, eighty nacupon, eddy abomono, more o nipa entity, amen.
When the Holy Spirit takes up residence in the family, that family becomes an extraordinary. You didn't hear that. Monty. When the Holy Spirit is within your family, your family is an extraordinary family. Why? Adinja. Tell me. Why? Yeah. Preach for me. Why do you think so? Adinja. Because what? Oh, there is peace. You have seen my paper. You. I'm saying that when the Holy Spirit takes possession of your family, your, whole, your family becomes an extraordinary family. Why? Somebody said because there is what? Okay, good. What else? Joy! What else? Huh? There is love in the There is understanding there. There is prosperity. Yet, there is hope. Come on now. Now dear, say obey You people have seen my paper. You, you know what is in my paper. That church becomes a representative of Jesus Christ. And therefore, that family is also a representative of the church of God. Because Jesus Christ is the head of the church. If you understand the lesson so far, say amen. We're talking about spirit filled, spirit filled family. Let the Holy Spirit fill your family. Okay. So, what are you telling me? David, okay. Let me give you the text. So, we will, we, we will go fast and finish. It. All right. We read Galatians okay. chapter 5, verse 22. You know the text very well. Galatians 5, 22. It says, but when the Holy Spirit controls our lives, he will produce this kind of fruit in us. Number one, dedicate love or do hmm. joy energy peace asumje. Patience, about your tree. Kindness, I am ye. Goodness, Papa, ye. Faithfulness, GD. Gentleness, or jaw. Self control, and it a ho. Galatians 5 22 23. If it's a four, if three, and no, if you are no, if your family is a spirit filled. Spirit controlled. These are the signs, the fruits of Love. Is there any love in your family? Are you sure? If, if, if you are sure whether there's love in your family, you will see it later on when my wife comes up. She will talk about love. Joy. There should be joy in the family. There should be peace in the family. There should be patience in the family. Do you know what is patient? There is a prayer in America. Say, Lord, I want you to give me Give me money. But give it to me now. Amen. 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 Amen.
Is there any patience in your family? Between you and your wife. Between you and your children. This afternoon we'll talk a lot. We will talk. Don't you ever think that marriages are all rosy? Marriage is so smooth. Mama will be no say our dear no at the house are a tree tree be in the baby and tissa. It is not so, and tissa. It must be so so that you go through it with God and with Jesus Christ. Said the only Yamnik is to a bit me after our dear. So if there are problems in the family, he said, How about you anymore? And you don't have anybody like Jesus Christ to rely on. You are the most, you are the most miserable person. And now Amen. Amen. I want you to be thinking about it. The last word. If the Holy Spirit is within the family. He says there is self-control. And self-control. I will just I will like that better. Okay. You control yourself. Husbands control yourself. Wives, control yourself. Control your mind. Let the Holy Spirit help you to control yourself. These days, today, many people have discarded all these fruits of the Spirit. So what do they do? Did they Ah, uh, they they have taken marriage. What for our dear say? Like uh, how do you call it? Take away, take away container. And they say, "What could you have done?" Take away plate. Um, boom! Oh, we are about to have If you finish eating, throw it away. Say, "What could you have done?" Boom! We are to have Make marriage like take away. Yeah, yeah. Our dear, they say, "Don't throw it away." It did we are not to have done. Not important. Is that how you think of marriage? Throw it away. Use it, use it and throw it away. Let, let, me, let me see the hands of those who have eaten in takeaway plate before. Let's see the hands. Yeah. Oh, you have. There are some people you haven't used takeaway plate before. Who you see? I have used it because I, I like Kentucky. <laughs> oh, my pet, my pet, uh, don't take it. Don't, don't say it again. And you like it. And I want what, what? McDonald's. You like it. McDonald's, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, marriage. Is a serious I'm a dear idea. I said, Yeah, friend say a idea. I won't hear pay. It's a serious what? Institution. A idea a marriage is a serious situation. A young couple more in here pay. It is an institution made by God. So please, don't, don't eat marriage and throw it away. Like it. God says, I should tell you, keep the fruits of the marriage. And let your Holy, the Holy Spirit remain in the marriage. Let's wrap up here. So that we can um, the spiritual family again. If the spirit of God is in the family, so the family will speak of the spirit of God. People will see it. 
Let me tell you. You know John Wesley. Who John Wesley? John Wesley? John Wesley. Who who who, who was John Wesley? Why John Wesley? Eh? He brought the Methodist church. Only the Methodist as a for Most of the hymns we are singing now, he composed them. He was a spirit filled man. He married Lori. Gloria. That's the name of the wife. And because he married Lori, his marriage was one of the most unhappiness marriage. Do you think a person like John, John Wesley should marry a lady who will who who put pepper in his eyes? <laughs> It's all about what? One thing. Listen. John Wesley was full of the Spirit of God. The work of God, number one, God first. So anytime he was on the move and had no no need a man That's all. That's all. Yeah, no, no, no. And the wife talked about it. No, no, no. And the wife talked about it. And the wife talked about it. And the wife talked about it. And she was mad. Not a team. And John Wesley said, God first. Now don't in the afternoon, if you have any question, you ask me. We'll talk about it. Now we are not always say we be sami. You better come Do you think such a thing should break a marriage? Do you say do you say a good idea? Okay. Number two. It also me you. Lori, all the time, took John Wesley's uh, diary and read his his letters. Without letting John Wesley know about it. No, ma John Wesley say, Oh, yes, I man. Do you know what Laurie wanted to know in, the, in those letters? Um the officer of Nufisa and Cratter's men. Always there was an there was an invitation. For them to come and preach always. So she wanted to intercept all those things. No more to go and preach. Number three. Yeah. She wanted to intercept no. John Wesley said this. John Wesley can say we. I want to marry somebody who is just like my mother. But when I married you, I have found that you, you are not like my mother. Oh, is that what you are saying? Go and marry your mother. What 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 actually uh, Lori was trying to tell her husband John Wesley? John Wesley say, Don't you compare me with what? Your mother. There are some some marriages are like that. Our baby is our if not comparing with your mother, you compare her with another person. Say, oh, to two before me home. Please, Miss Row. Please, Miss Row. Don't copy. I don't say, don't copy John Wesley's uh, dark side. And for John Wesley, near my name, you know. There are certain little, little things which matter 
in marriage. Take note of them. I will ask you to ask questions in no the afternoon. That's why I'm here. So we will, we will be closing soon. Um, so we are to glorify Jesus Christ in our marriage. Because Jesus' presence is vital in our marriage success. Remember, I say, it is not money that will make or keep the family strong. Because some of the richest families, even those in Hollywood, have lost it. It is not positions of power or influence that will bring family success. Because many prominent families have crumbled. It is not friends or relatives that will keep the family together. Not friends or relatives. Sometimes some of them cause more harm. Jesus is a great builder. He is the, the family builder. The psalmist says, unless the Lord builds the house, unless the Lord builds the family, unless the Lord will build you Husband or you wife, you labor, but in vain. Can we take this serious and make God first in our life? That Jesus alone can bind you together with the cause which never can break. And Jesus demonstrated. His deep interest in our family happiness by performing his first public miracle at a wedding. Because Jesus Christ is interested in our marriage. And he wants to put a stamp on it. And because he instituted marriage from the garden of Eden. And he said your marriage should be what? A sanctuary. What did I say? Your marriage should be what? A sanctuary. Where the Holy Spirit can visit every day. That is the lesson we are studying this quarter. Your marriage. Marriage is a sanctuary. If you allow your family, your home to be a sanctuary before you come to church, the work is done. Amen. Amen. What did Jesus do? I listen to you. I'm going about to close. When Jesus visited that marriage. In Canaan of Galilee, yes, you call Cana our dear old He sat down. Jesus knew all about marriage. Only be be a far dear. Jesus knew the couple. Only our phone. They did not even know that Jesus, Jesus knew them. I'm going to lose a yes anymore, ladies and gentlemen. And we are no more. Sometimes we forget. That Jesus knows all about us. Yes, in our be for your Don't deceive yourself. He knows you. He knows your thoughts. As a matter of fact, this is not what I wanted to do today. But maybe in the afternoon I will begin with that. You will understand. In Psalm 139. We read that David says, even if 
I go to the what? To the back of the sea, the horizon. Even, even there, God will meet me there. If I, if I make my bed in hell, under the earth, God will meet me there. Did you read that text? Did you read that text? That is the God we worship. Don't have to pray with God. Everywhere we are, He is there. And David says, David even before I speak, are you hearing it? Before I speak, God knows the words that will come from my tongue and what is in my mind. He knows it. If every father, if every mother, if every member will understand God that way, that God knows your thoughts. That's what he says. Then we will all think twice. If we want to do something. But sometimes we forget. I want to tell you today. God knows your mind. God knows your mind. God knows your thoughts. You have been told me. But he knows it. Afar off. Give him chance there. Give him chance in your family. Because he made your family. How? Oh, he give him chance. You don't want to do it? How you are you listen? They were there. No more. And they were enjoying the ceremony. No more the and all of a sudden, the drink. The drink got shot. Sometimes when you read the text, think about it seriously. In the presence of Jesus Christ and his mother, the drink got shot. And with all these visitors now, it's going to be a disgrace. Oh, thank God that Jesus Christ was there. And Jesus Christ did not want any disgrace for that family. He didn't want any disgrace for the couple. He didn't say anything yet. And the spirit spoke to the wife, to the mother. And the mother stood up. Now Mary, sorry. And got to the uh, to the servants. Because she also she also saw the situation was going to be very serious. Whatever my son tells you, do it. Yeah. The spirit of God was working. The spirit of God was working. That spirit was controlling the heart of the mother and the, the son, Jesus, together. God was there. Because it was God who instituted marriage. He was there. Whatever my son tells you. Our problem these days in the churches, yeah, how was our problem, problem in the world, yeah, what, 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 our what, what, problem in the political world, yeah, what, 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 go to anywhere. anywhere. If all the heads of states, am all I, the presidents, am I, all the ministers, am I, am I all the church now. members, if only we will stop and think on the words of mother of Jesus Christ. Whatever my son Jesus Christ tells you, do it. Yeah. It means what my son doesn't tell you, don't do it. Are you hearing it? If you are going to do something and you know the, that Jesus wouldn't like it, 
don't do. So okay, we don't say yes, we empower. As simple as that. As, uh, don't do, do it. And yet, you ask yourself whether Jesus will like it. It's or John says yes, you or no. And uh, Jesus got up. Yes, sorry. He got up when man's limitations have reached. Yes, sorry. And Brian, I'm holding you now, sir. Nothing. Be No drink. And sana sir. No power. Be pee Nothing. When man's effort and your everything has reached what? Give me the word. Limit. Say your word in be pia. It has reached its limits. Then God begins to work. Holy Amen. 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 It is when everything is finished, it's rich limit. Amen. That is the time when God also begins and show his power. Jesus got up. Yes, sorry. Nothing, no drink. And everybody was panicking. Then his spirit began to work. The spirit began to work. Spirit, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any problem in your home, stop and think and rely on Jesus Christ. And you say, oh, how and say Lord, I will not take the power into my hands. I rely on you. I rely on you. I rely on you. Especially when it has to do with marriage. Teach you a man what our deal. Look here. Bring the empty. The empty jars. He didn't say, bring those empty jars. Fill them with water. Fill them with what? In Ordinary water. In And they did it. No more. And he said, Have you finished? Have you finished listening to me? Did you, did you bring the jars? Yes. Did you did you listen what I said? Fill the jars with water. Yes, we did. Now the last point. Dish out. And say. Would you do it? Obey. Yes, sir. Aye. And they dish out. No more cause she said. And they said. And they said. And they said. The Bible says. Trust me, dear. Say, just say. And the taste of the wine uh, that Jesus Christ made was even better. Now say that the first wine. Why don't you depend upon Jesus? Christ? Why don't you depend upon Jesus Christ? We, we, we're going to pray seriously this morning. Because that's what I want us to do. Ask God to come into our families. Into our lives. That the Holy Spirit should control our lives. Ladies and gentlemen. First Corinthians chapter 13. We have a very wonderful text to close with. I thought um, we will read it. Sometimes we read it, we don't understand it. But we are told that when, when the church family or the family is filled with the Spirit of God, this is what actually it means. We need the uh, as a church of AE. In First Corinthians chapter chapter thirteen. We are told that yeah, the spirit filled family is a loving family. Somebody mentioned it here. 
I love you. Me do. 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 And you too, you say, I love you. No, so I can say, me do. And so we love each other. And then we put our hands together. And what does that mean? Jesus says this. Love suffers long. It is patient. Although, it is patient with imperfect people. Hold Do you love your wife? Do you love your husband? Do you love your children? The text says, it just have to say, love suffers long. It is patient. Yeah. Love is kind. It enjoys doing good for others. Are you kind? Are you kind? Do you enjoy doing good to others? Does not envy. It wants others to get ahead. Or, do you know that there are some people? I know a couple. Whenever the wife wants to study and to go ahead, she he doesn't want it. He wants to be on top always. Maybe your person don't want a customer. Are you envying your wife? It's your neighbor or Are you envying your husband? When they pray, we could not. Love doesn't envy. What does it do? Love does not parade itself. What do I want for the one who? It is not ostentatious or showy. Um, on yet mini mini. If you are doing something good for your husband, don't make anybody say, Oh, yeah, I'm going to go to the house. Don't show it. Are you hearing me? Not ostentatiousness. No. If you are doing something for your wife, don't, don't, don't make people to know about it. Between the two of you. Go on. Love is not puffed up. Puffed. Not arrogant. It is not arrogant nor conceited. Yeah. Love does not behave rudely. It is courteous and manly. Love does not seek its own. It, it is very unselfish. Love is not easily provoked. It is graceful under pressure. Wait. I for this, I will say it here. Nobody knows the person. I'm not going to call the person's name. But I went to Italy. Me call Italy, ma'am. To conduct spirit a revival meeting. There was one elder. I mean an elder. And his wife. After the revival. That elder called me. He said, Pastor. We are inviting you to our home. I said, you were who? He said, uh, uh, my wife and I would like you to come. For what? 
We want you to come and eat and pray with us. I said, my, I want to come and pray with you. Not the food, don't worry. Now listen carefully. When we were at the table, I asked the, the, the elder, if we do you have some problems in the house that we can pray about? That's why I've come here. I say yes. I said, what is it? He said, Pastor, these are our children. This boy, the first the first son is with the mother. And these other three, they are with me. Oh, so I said, which means you are divided. He said, yes. I said, why? I did He couldn't say the thing. Then the wife got up and said, Pastor, let me tell you the truth. I said, tell me the truth. He said, catch me. Then she said, Pastor, we've been married for many years. There's only one thing that my husband is doing which he doesn't see that it's wrong. I said, what? I said, what is it? He said, any day. He said, Pastor, could you believe that behind me, my wife, my husband is building a house for his relatives and he doesn't want me to know about it. And the, the first house we built, he said he is giving one room to one of his brothers. When he has already built family house for them. I have said it. I have said it. I have said it. But he doesn't see eye to eye. What did you read there, darling? Uh, you know, to say it. Seek. Love does not seek its own. Of course. If you tell your wife, I want to build a house for my family. What is wrong about it? But he is an elder of the church. And he says he doesn't see anything wrong with that. In fact, he even argued and fought with me on this. He said, Pastor, I have my own money. You have your own money. If you don't know it today, so, and now, no more. your money is, is, is your wife's money. Your wife's money is your money. Always it is our money. Ow, ow, yeah, ow, yeah, yeah. ow. You better stop saying it is my money. It is whose money? Jai, like I say, me, After me. all, the money belongs yeah, to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is God's money. It is God's money. Very sad. We prayed over it. He said, Pastor, thank you very much. We will stop. We will st- I will stop. I said, Well, if you stop, it will okay. be better for you. There will be happiness in the marriage. Sadly to say, when, when I came back, and I called back to Italy, and I said, How are you doing? What is he saying? The, 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 the wife said, Pastor, the same thing as we left. 
It's very sad, isn't it? Most of us are going to miss heaven. Because we are seeking our own. Love thinks no evil. Thinks no evil. It does not harbor resentment. Don't think evil about your partner. Love keeps excuse me. Love keeps no score of wrongs. It is forgiven. Love doesn't keep a diary of wrong, wrong, wrong things. Do you know what you did that? Last year, you remember you said, two years ago, you remember. Five years ago, when we were in Kumasi, when we were in Kumasi, we do you know? What is the meaning? Ladies and gentlemen, you know love keeps no record of, of wrong doings. Love is forgiving. 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 Did I tell you the story of um, of the the lady in the Rwanda? The the fight, the civil war between the the Tutsis and then the and to quite see who choose any two season who to the man came and killed everybody in the church Adventist church I'm talking about it they killed everybody in the church and one lady and the husband and the children they went and hid themselves in the corner of the church. And the man came and slashed the husband with the machete, machete and killed the husband and killed the children and also inflicted wounds on the wife. And the wife said, she, she fell down unconscious. And the man thought that she was dead. And so he left her. And when everybody, the place was quiet. She got up with the pain. Oh, sorry. I will pray. And the wounds. And the blood. And he walked on the all the dead bodies. And he all the dead bodies. And he ran to the hospital. No, she, she ran to the hospital. She stayed in the hospital for four months. No, it's not her, but it's not in short, she came back healthy. No, no, her turn to open your eyes, sir. Because she is an Adventist. Let me say, yes, to Nintin. Eh, maybe that can be. She continued the work she loved to do in the church as a, a what is it? Um, PM. It's no, you feel I'm saying can. She was four P- or twelve. PM, personal ministries. And they camp. went to the prison. No, to, or call, if okay, yam, to preach. Okay, yam, At that time, the government that came on rallied all those people who killed the people. You know. So some of them were in the prison. And this woman incidentally bombed into the very man. Who killed the husband nah, and the children and herself too? Echo, Prince of Kenya, I'm saying, Odu, a hono, Oku, who bear man, or two jar, or no, Oku. And when she was reading her Bible, they were all kind of choice, seven to him, I chose a bear man. The man came and knelt down. Now, my men, Papa, no, the boom, could you name He said, Do you know me? The person who knew me said, I know I don't know you. He said, I'm minimal. He said, Please forgive me. He said, I'm born in Chemi. He said, What have you done? He said, Dear Nawaye. He said, please forgive me. He said, what have you done? He said, you don't know me. But I know you. I was the one who killed your husband and your children 
and I touch your head with the mercury in the church. I saw you very well because you were the last person. Please forgive me. Mr. Fachemi. The woman said, there is only one person who forgives. And that person is Jesus Christ. Only Jesus Christ. And he is the person controlling me now. I am filled with the Spirit. So I will ask Jesus to forgive you. I don't forgive. But I accept what you are saying. Following week, that man was discharged, released from the hospital. He went, he went straight to this lady's house. Why? Because he has nowhere to sleep. And this lady accepted the man. Gave him a room. A man dying at them. Bought him. As, I mean, clothing. At the at what time? A man on a fry. Feed him. Started to feed him. I shall say, man, a Christianity. Can you? Can you even? Can you even invite such a person to your house? If I should say, people are with me. Can you do it? I'm talking about what the Bible calls what? Total what? Forgiveness. Total forgiveness. Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about what? Killing death. It's not easy to go to heaven. It's not easy. That we have to go there. When we get to heaven, we will show our medals. That we pass through hell. What stories are you going to tell in heaven? When you get there, we shall overcome. By the blood of Jesus Christ. Do you know how to forgive? I mean, do you know how to forgive? If you don't know how to forgive, this afternoon, this afternoon, this afternoon, I will talk about something. We will all pray about it. Ask God to give us the spirit of forgiveness. I am talking about total forgiveness. We will conclude, darling. Love does not rejoice in iniquity. It finds no joy in the shortcomings of others. It rejoices in the truth. It spreads good news, not bad news. Love bears all things. It defends and supports those it loves. Love believes in all things. It believes the best about others. Love hopes all things. It never gives up on those it loves. Love endures all things. It 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 is preserving and loyal. And love never fails. It is eternal. It will outlast anything. Ladies and gentlemen, our time is up. Many family problems would disappear in the face of love. If you want a great family, 
fill it with the real love. We will continue in the afternoon. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want to pray with you. Me, me, I'm sorry. I want you to pray for yourself. One minute. Ask God to give you a real love. Ask God to give you the love that never fails. In your family. Oh, yeah, Pray for your wife. Pray for your husband. Pray for your children. Pray for somebody you know that needs a real love from heaven to make his or her family come together. Do that. Our Father in heaven, we stand before you this divine service hour, not because we are worthy, not because we are clean, but we stand before you wretched, sinful. When we examine ourselves in the light of your word about love, we fall short, we fall short, we fall short. But Lord, you have come to church today to strengthen us and to remind us of all the things we should do. Forgive us. Forgive us. And give us the right spirit. Fill our families with your Holy Spirit. Fill our hearts with your Holy Spirit. Fill our marriages with your Holy Spirit. Fill our wives with your Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of our husbands with your Holy Spirit. Take over the hearts of our children with your Holy Spirit. And the church at large. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.